So now that we have a pretty good understanding of how Grover's algorithm works, I want to look at how you would actually implement it using common quantum gates. The first step is going from the state zero to the uniform superposition. And we've covered how to do that in a previous video. Namely, you apply a Hadamard gate to each of the qubits. And I'm gonna call this operation just H for simplicity rather than listing out all of these individual Hadamard gates. And then the rest of Grover's algorithm consists of applying the oracle O followed by applying the Grover diffusion operator D. And because O changes based on the problem we're looking at, I can't give a general implementation of it here. It's going to vary depending on the application. Or if you're looking at the problem where O is a black box, then it's something that's given to you, not something that you implement. So really the only part of Grover's algorithm that we don't know how to implement yet is the Grover diffusion operator D. We know that D is a reflection about the uniform superposition and that it's represented by the transformation uh, two times the projection operator onto S minus the identity operator. But this doesn't really give us any clues about how to implement D uh, using common quantum gates. It turns out to be much uh, simpler to figure this out if we slightly rewrite D. Instead of writing D as a reflection about S, we can write it as a reflection about zero, but preceded and followed by uh, H, the Hadamard gate applied to each of the qubits. And it's not immediately obvious to me anyway why this is equivalent to a reflection about S. So let's dig into that a bit. This operator can be broken up into two simpler operators using the linearity of linear transformations. The first piece is gonna be two times H times the projection onto zero times H again. And the second piece is going to be negative H I H, which is just the identity operator because H is its own inverse. So this is looking closer to our original expression for D. We will have shown it's equivalent if we can show that H times the projection operator onto zero times H again is equal to the projection operator onto S. So the first piece is clearly equal to the vector S. So the problem is really showing that this second piece um, applying H to some state followed by taking the inner product of that state with zero is just equivalent to taking the inner product with S. So let's look at what happens to an arbitrary vector V when we apply H to it followed by taking the inner product with zero. We're just going to get this scalar. And what we wanna show is that this scalar is equivalent to the inner product of the uniform superposition S with V. The trick to doing this is to use the Hermitian adjoint of H. The Hermitian adjoint is a special operator that has many interesting properties, but the one we're interested in here is that if we have some transformation T in two arbitrary vectors A and B, then the inner product of A with the vector that results from applying T to B is the same as taking the inner product between a being acted on with the Hermitian adjoint of T with the vector B. You may remember when we first talked about quantum gates that I said the transformation that represents a quantum gate is a unitary transformation. Among other things, this means that the Hermitian adjoint of the transformation is the transformation's inverse. So applying the transformation followed by applying the transformation's Hermitian adjoint is the same thing as doing nothing at all. It's the identity transformation. And this means it's really easy to figure out the Hermitian adjoint of H. 
we know that H is its own inverse, so that means that the Hermitian adjoint of H is H itself. So this inner product zero with H acting on V is the same thing as this inner product, the Hermitian adjoint of H acting on zero with V. And the Hermitian adjoint of H is just H. So this first vector is just H acting on zero, which is of course the uniform superposition. So this inner product is indeed equal to the inner product of S with V, which is what we wanted to show. It means that H acting on a vector followed by taking the inner product with zero is equivalent to just taking the inner product with S in the first place. And that means that the Grober diffusion operator, two times the projection onto S minus the identity operator, is the same thing as two times the projection onto zero minus the identity operator preceded and followed by an application of H. And this is useful because it's much more obvious how to implement this reflection about zero than it is to implement the reflection about S. Let's consider what the reflection about zero does to each of the vectors in the computational basis. If the vector isn't equal to zero, then this inner product with zero is going to give the scalar zero. So we just end up with the negative identity operator acting on the vector. So we just get a negative sign in front of the basis vector. And if the vector is zero, then the reflection about zero is just going to give zero back again. So if we're acting on zero, we don't do anything. And if we're acting on any of the basis vectors besides zero, we put a negative sign in front of that vector. So if we have n qubits, to implement this reflection about zero, we just or all of these qubits together. So the result is going to be one if any of these n qubits are non-zero and zero if they're all zero, i.e. our state is zero. And then we want to negate the coefficient in front of our state if the result of that or was one and do nothing if the result was zero. And the way to do this is to do a controlled knot on the state one over root two, zero minus one, where the control bit is the result of oring our n qubits together. If the control bit is a zero, that means we're in the state zero, and we don't do anything to the qubit that's in the state one over root two, zero minus one. So we finish in the same state we started in, which is what we want. And if the control bit is a one, meaning we're in any of the states besides zero, then we apply a not to this qubit in the state one of root two, zero minus one, which just swaps the zero and the one. And that's equivalent to adding a negative sign in front of the state, which is exactly what we wanna do when our n qubits aren't in the state zero. I haven't shown how to actually implement this OR gate using more fundamental quantum gates, but that's because it involves using ancillary qubits and uncomputing the garbage that gets put in those qubits while computing the OR. But the take home message is that this OR gate can be computed efficiently just using CNOT gates or uh, Toffoli gates. So now we know how to implement the Grover diffusion operator. We apply a Hadamard gate to all of our qubits, then we compute the OR of all the qubits and use that as the control bit on a control knot that's acting on the state one over root two, zero minus one. And then we again apply a Hadamard gate to all of the qubits. And because implementing the Grover diffusion operator is the only tricky part about implementing Grover's algorithm, we now know how to implement Grover's algorithm.